Hello. Much better. My name is Meg Miller, Adult Services Librarian at Flint River Public Library, and welcome to Virtual Laser Cutter Craft. Uh, this is something we used to do on the third, fourth Wednesday of every month, um, and that noise you heard was our wonderful Hobby Series Laser Cutter. Um, and so we are going to be bringing you these videos, and for the first 30 people who sign up, um, they'll be able to come and pick up a kit of supplies to make these crafts. So let's see what's in the bag to, this week. Um, so this is a paper, laser cut paper shadow box. Um, so you'll be getting a shadow box. A uh, few people, we, uh, they ran out of white, so a few people will get a gray um, shadow box that has a little bit of fabric on the back. Uh, the bag should also include two envelopes. So these are actually two different designs of shadow box. Um, one and then a little bonus one for uh, the upcoming holiday. Uh, so also in one of the envelopes you will get some of the little foam mounting squares that you'll use and you these will be enough to use for both designs all right and this is a really straightforward um, easy construction so this is the design um, there are some slight differentiations between colors from each of the bags um, depending on what you get and then the second design that became a bonus as i said We've got 4th of July coming up, so you've got a nice little American flag shadow box that you can make as well. All right, as I said, um, this is going to be a really easy um, construction for this particular craft. And we're just going to be putting the foam mounting squares onto the paper and then installing it into our shadow box. Um, these shadow boxes, like a picture frame, have the little pieces that you can um, move out of the way. And then the back comes out. And you've got your two separate pieces. So I'm actually uh, not going to be attaching my shadow box to the back of this because I'll be changing it out periodically. Um, but if I wanted a more permanent, I could attach my last piece of paper to this actual backing and then it would be a little bit more uh, sturdy. So I'm going to take the envelope with my floral pattern pieces and my foam mounting squares and that's what I'm going to start with. Um, so these have been stacked in the envelope in order. Um, if things get out or flipped around, um, they won't look exactly the same when it's all together and your little circles won't match up. Um, although that kaleidoscope look isn't really the worst thing in the world. Um, you can identify some of the same type that are gonna be of shape that are gonna be on and so you can make sure that those match up. Nope. This guy's been flipped around. Paper is one of the easier materials to cut with the laser cutter when comparing to things like wood and acrylic that are much thicker and may need several passes to cut all the way through and higher power settings. If you give paper too much power, the edges of your cuts can actually smolder and ruin the design. So for these cuts, we are using a much lower power setting. I'm using between 25 and 35 for this project. Speed settings are also up pretty high at 90 to 95, though in order to show you all of the cuts that went into this paper shadow box, you can see how fast we've had to speed up the video. Depending on the number of cuts needed, the layers of this project took between 30 seconds for the green layer and over 13 minutes for all of the cuts on this top black layer. In order to cut down on any potential fires, one of the most important steps in using the library laser cutter is to clean up the scraps that have fallen into the machine when the cuts have finished. Now it's ready for the next project and we're back to our shadow box. So in case you get them out of order, um, you should be able to put them back together. So your first piece is definitely going to be this black one. It has all of the different shapes cut out. Um, when I initially designed this, I actually took this colored in and made um, what would ultimately be each of the flowers, identified some mineral portions, um, some things that would be leaves, and then took the design file and just removed pieces for each of these subsequent layers. So the first layer is black. Uh, your second layer is either going to be blue or purple, um, and it's got a lot more cutouts and then one small centerpiece cut out there. Your third piece of paper is going to be the pink one of some shade and um, we've still got the, the circle there and we're missing a few more of the cuts over here 
The fourth piece of paper will be yellow or orange and it will have just a few cutouts. And then our final piece of paper will be the green square um, that has no cutouts and will ultimately be the back. So construction wise, you can start um, from the top or the bottom. Uh, you could even go in the middle because this design won't really require too many foam mounting squares in the middle, um, especially because a lot of these are really tiny. Um, we're only going to use half of these. There'll be 24, so I'm going to do one in the, each of the corners and then um, one on each of the middle to hold up a little bit more. So these tiny, tiny little foam mounting squares have a solid sheet and then a backing on the very top as well. They're not too hard to get off with just a finger um, and place right down in the corner. But if you've got a pair of tweezers handy, that might be slightly faster going for you to actually put those down using tweezers. One on each corner. There, one on each corner. And then, as I said, I'm going to do on the long side, one on each, right about the center. I'm staying fairly close to the edge. Um, so then for this one, I'm going to peel off the little backings that are on the top of each of the full mounting squares. It's a delicate process. There we go. And then I know that on top of my orange is going to go my pink layer, or this may be yellow for you. Um, so I'm gonna match up. Again, I'm finding a shape that I see mirrored in the uh, layer below it, and I'm gonna match those up. There we go. Got my full mounting under there. I'm just gonna not push down too far so I'm not squishing the foam but enough to get a good tack on there. And so let's see, I'll do my bottom green layer next. Full square. In the middle on the long edge. Top corner. take the little backing off the other side of the foam square oh, did I get it I got it I right, just wants to stick around sorry you cannot stay all right so now I've got my pink and orange layer together and the green layer has no so it really doesn't matter which direction you go for that particular layer just making sure that you're matching up and fairly flush on there. It looks like my bottom is a little tilted here. So I'm going to gently remove from the paper and come back over so that now I'm a little bit more flush with the bottom there. So we're starting to see some of the orange in here and the green where I identified things that I felt would be leafish. All right, and I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to build up from here. So I've got my little squares. And having this little bit of distance in between your layers um, gives it a little bit more of a 3D effect. You can make these um, where the layers are really just right on top of each other. Um, Etsy, uh, there are a ton of other websites out there that would have 
uh, designs that you can cut with paper um, either with a laser cutter as we did for this craft um, or even something uh, electronic cutting machine like a, a Cricut or a Silhouette or a Brother scan and cut like we have. Okay so now I'm ready for my blue or purple layer. Mine is blue so I'm going to match up my pieces there and other circles that match again just pushing gently all right and we are almost there now I just need my final black layer and so we've got the last round of foam squares Lost the top off of that one from the get-go. There we go. Oh, all four came off. There's one there. One for the corner. Okay, now we're ready for the final layer to get that last look. Again, matching. And there we are. I've got my shadow box ready. I'm going to go ahead and lay this face down in there. Oh, I'm not pushing too far. back on and there we have one nice little kind of floral patterned shadow box great for the summer and for the second design it'll be even easier and straightforward this one's only four different layers you got the solid white layer on the bottom and then your red layer will come next. Again, you've got six, um, you've got 24 foam squares left in the kit in order to put them there. Uh, there'll be a few spots probably in the stars that you might want to use foam squares. And then the blue layer will come next. Similarly, you may want to put a foam square or two within the star field to get a little bit more height there and on the finer layer you're only really going to have um, room for two the original design for this um, actually had this black layer using double-sided tape to really leave it just at the blue layer so that it didn't show through um, but that is totally up to personal preference and since we didn't attach the final layer of this to the shadow box. We can actually switch between the two. Um, you could make other shadow boxes for other holidays. And it's just a great little craft, uh, which we used our laser cutter for. Uh, so join us again next month on the fourth Wednesday of the month for another laser cutter craft. And if you live in the Pflugerville area, you can register online and be one of the 30 people who is able to pick up a supply kit and make this craft along with us. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>